I'm here with QFAM Gray and we are doing an enameling project today. This is an easy way to do enameling at home. Yes, it's a great way to do enameling at home, especially without the investment of a kiln. So what you want to start off with are some copper pieces. Um, whatever shapes and size you want, but you want it to be at least 24 gauge, but the heavier the better here. Okay. okay? So what, because of the um, process of making uh, stamping, there's going to be residue on there, so you always want to make sure that your copper is very clean because the enamel will not work otherwise. So what we're using is we're using an oil-free copper cleaner on our, um, on our pieces, and you just use your hands to clean that. So you can see I cleaned one, and there's the result, okay? Once you've cleaned that, you want to make sure that you um, enamel the back side first, and then we'll go ahead and enamel the front side. Once you've enameled the back side, what happens is you're going to create fire scale, which means that has to be cleaned off again, because again, it has to be clean to enamel. So once that's clean, so you can see there's the difference. And okay. you can do any kind of enamel on the back. You're basically just sealing that surface, right? Right. It doesn't matter what you use. We typically use, um, we typically use what we call counter enamel, which is basically leftover um, enamel. So once you have done that, you want to go ahead and use just a little brush and some holding agent. I know you can probably barely see that, but it's just a light glue, liquid glue, okay? This is 80 mesh enamels. Thompson, it is also lead free. So with a little sifter, we're gonna sift this with a nice coating on there. And we wanna work in a circle from the outside, work our way in, and you, you want it to have good coverage. You don't wanna see any copper through there. And the official answer as to how much enamel you want on there is three grains thick. All right, so you're taking a really careful measurement there. Just Absolutely, kidding. but you're gonna verify that <laughs> for me kidding. right now, right? <laughs> so. So the reason why I have it elevated here is so that I can lift it off with my spatula. You don't want to use your fingers on here because you'll disturb the enamel so it won't look good anymore. And gently put this on. And the reason why we're working on the um, magazine pages here so you can easily remove that and put it away because you don't want the enamel to cross contaminate. If you put too much holding agent on there, you'll see that it's wet and you need to make sure that this is dry before you fire it or else it will create bubbles. And we do want to mention that people should wear safety glasses too when they're using a torch at home. So we'll put on our safety glasses. Yep. Okay. This is a pistol torch. I like it for enameling, but you can use any butane torch. Okay. You come right under it like so. And you'll see the color changes. I chose red today so you can see the dramatic change it's going to make. Okay. And just get right under it and get it hot and you can see how it's already changing. And the surface will change, it'll look like sugar and then an orange peel. If you want to add layers, you want to keep going. All right, you want to stop there, but if you want it to be a final layer, you're going to keep going till it looks smooth. You see that? Yeah. So it's nice and smooth. Orange peel looks sort of like this here. So give it a, a few seconds before you can touch it. And here, unfortunately, it has adhered, so just get a little knock, put it down. And because it's glass, it will change colors once you fire it, okay? As you can see, it's already changing colors and it will become this bright red. Right, so how, about how long does it take for it to change all the way? To be completely well, cool, I should say. That's gonna depend on environment. So if you actually had like a bench block, it'll um, cool much quicker, but I would say about a minute. Okay. Is, is a safe amount. So if you decide that you want to add more layers, you can go ahead and sift on another layer here. So what we'll do is, oops, add some more holding agent. So this is one that you've already had, you've already added the layer and it's cool. It's already cool. And I actually stopped at that orange peel state so you can see it's a little rough versus our smooth one. Yeah. And we'll sift it. You can add some design on there if you want to. And then fire it off again. Okay. Okay. Gotta get our trivet here. Oops. Get your trivet. Sorry, I'll let That's you do okay. it. Always be careful when you're working in the studio with the flame that there are hot things. As you can see, I did drop my piece, but the holding agent allowed the piece to 
to allow the enamel to continue to stay on. Okay. Okay. And then you'll just fire that off again until it gets to a nice um, glossy surface, and then you can. Let's do see what you do want. it. We have time. Okay. Yeah, you know it's great to see the different colors. You can use a lot of different. You can use a lot of different uh, elements to add for design aspects if you wanted to. But there, the world of enamel is so fast that you can do so many different things with your metal. It's really great that we can add so much color to right. our enamel. And then once it's finished, you don't have to do anything to the top, to the surface, That's it. because it's glass. Right. If you want to, some people like to put a, um, a clear enamel over the top, but sometimes you don't need it. You know, um, a lot, like if I was using metal elements, I'll put a clear on there to seal the metal if I want the metal to look a certain way. Right. Or if I was using decals, I'll use a clear over the top so that the decal is set in there. Okay, okay. and how many layers do you normally put on each piece or does it just depend on what type of design you're doing? It depends on the design I'm doing. Um, the, the trick here is to never have more enamel than metal if you're only doing one side. But it, since we're counter enameling and enameling on the back side, you want to make sure that you have the same amount of enamel on the back as you do at the front because of um, expansion rates. What you're doing is you're preventing the enamel from cracking off. Oh, OK. Very common question. Most people go, well, my enamel's cracking, and there's little um, circles of cracks. Well, the reason why you have that is because you didn't balance out your enamel. You either had too much enamel, or more enamel than your metal, or you didn't counter enamel enough to balance it out. So basically, the enamel will um, sandwich in and create a vise on that metal so it doesn't crack off. But you know, one thing I didn't mention that a lot of people don't understand is enamel is powdered glass. Right. So what we're doing is we're fusing these little sand pieces together so now it becomes glass. So this is honest glass. We can take a hammer to it. Cracks it, just like it glass. It cracks just like glass. So in a piece like this, you have a layer on the front, also a layer on the back. Mm -hmm. If you layer it up more on the front, then you layer it more on the back is what yes. you're saying. But it's a little bit difficult when we're torching. So you want to think about how many layers you, you're doing before you start. Because if you flip this over to do that back side, you'll ruin the front side because we're putting the torch or the flame directly onto it. However, if you're doing it in a kiln, you can do as many layers as you want and um, front or back whenever you want and then stick it in the kiln because the heat's coming in from both sides or all sides. Right, so, it so it's matter. nice and even. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at some of these finished samples that you brought because here are some different ideas for how you can add design elements to your work. Mm -hmm. Let's start over here with this one. So this is, um, these are stringers, what they call stringers, and they come just sort of like that. And you place this, these on. The thing that I learned is you really want to put it on when you're, um, before you torture, else they'll roll off. Okay? okay. And then we add it to some metal pieces. Seed beads are great, but better be glass and not plastic. Um, we did a rubber stamp here. All right, those are beautiful examples and so many different ways that you can bring this into your work at home. Mm -hmm. I love these, thank you so much, Q. You're welcome.